one of the top seats in the whole country for us to take back the house. Katie's a first time candidate and a lot of this is a relationship game. Only real barometer is who's raising the most money. We are dialing for dollars. This is Katie Hill, the congressional candidate endorsed by Emily's List, running against Steve Knight. Mm -hmm. Hello? Cut. Really nice. Probably how often I feel like an asshole is one of the biggest surprises. You know, any one of these debates can get a lot of attention. I know that you went into the last one a little bit sick. I don't know if I was sick. That's what we were telling people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Paid for by Brian Caforio for Congress. Brian just dropped his first very negative mailer today. Are we now free to light his ass up? We as women say that we support other women, but with Democratic women, Brian is beating me by 20 points. How am I gonna not freak the fuck out tonight? Ah, this so might have to like go disappear and scream. Congratulations. This is just the beginning. Take a few breaths and then we're getting right back to work. Thanks for stopping by. We'll be back. <laughs> I just had a nice chat with Swing Left. Oh yeah? Yep. They're gonna wire their check to us. How much? 250. 250K? Yeah. Nuh-uh. So I think we'll make payroll this month. 250K? <laughs> yeah. So it was a good fundraising day today, the way I see it. Oh, well, I got another 40K coming from that climate thing. Hello, this is Katie. This is Zach with Katie Hill for Congress. It feels surreal, but we feel great. Now it's gonna be quite the journey from here. I think you have to plan as though you're gonna win. So we've had at least sort of tentative plans on how best to move forward. Um, but it's, I it's feel gonna be very scary. excited, but definitely overwhelmed. I have about 50 messages at least that I haven't responded to or even looked at in some cases, like all these phone calls and voicemails that I haven't gotten to, several members of Congress who have called. Uh, I don't know what they said on their voicemails and about a bazillion press calls that we're trying to get through. So meanwhile, we have to get my animals back to my house. Hey, Graham. Oh, hi. How's it going? Hi. Yeah, it's a setup because I need you to do me a really huge favor. What's that? I need you to go get my dog and take her to the groomer in my car. And she might have been sprayed by a skunk. Um, something I gotta tell you. What? I'm not a legal driver in the state of California. What? <laughs> really? Yeah. You just drove here. Yeah, in my car. <laughs> uh, I mean, it's definitely a huge sense of relief. You know, this is when it gets fun. Uh, no more of the petty, like, Democrat on Democrat violence and, you know, like, just poking each other in the eye now are going up against the people who like the wind changes in that we all keep doing it. It's a pretty incredible feeling to know that we're advancing. It feels crazy. I think that we get to the end and I I thought that we'd have like a breather and then uh, we started on the phones at 10 a.m. this morning. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. A lot of phone calls, guys. How many text messages do you have this morning? I don't, I haven't even gotten to them. It was like, I don't even know who these people are. All the, you know, countless individuals that, you know, refuse to get involved in a primary and they're like, oh, um, you know, call me, call me back in the general. Well, now's that time. We're going to call you. <laughs> um, you know, people that, you know, supported our opponents. Uh, well, now we get to call them and say, you have to support Katie in the name of Democratic Unity and with a smile on her face. Friend of ideas, and I wish you the absolute best and all my congratulations. Thanks and best wishes. Bye. Good for him. That was, wow. that was classy. I'm that was a good. Here, do you have his numbers? Yeah, Brian gave a really gracious, he left me a very gracious voicemail, said good luck. He, his post, his concession post uh, was was really nice and said that he and Lisa are going to spend the next five months uh, doing everything they can to help defeat Steve Knight. We have to remember is that Steve Knight still got more votes than the rest of the Democrats combined. There's a lot of different reasons for that, and it shows us that this is going to be a tough fight. There's no rest for the wicked, and um, 
money don't grow on trees, so. <laughs> dollars just came in if only we had a gong so the biggest changes are we've expanded our finance team we've brought on a deputy finance director this time last summer we raised 120,000 for the whole quarter over the course of three months and that was considered a very significant amount of money at the time we need to average that per week moving forward so Hi, Katie needs to be you? clearing at least six figures a week for the rest of the campaign we want to hit about 1.3 million for this quarter and we're getting close today, but the deadline's tonight, so. Yeah, it's midnight tonight, Eastern time. So 9 p.m. California time. They're holding up. We are having a big day, trying to make it a bigger one. We need to raise about $20,000 in the next uh, two hours. Right. Sounds a little ambitious, Thanks. but Thanks. you can never count on Katie Hill, so. Any guess? 1,000? 2,700. 5,400. Woo! <laughs> it's my money dance. 100? 100? A hundred? Oh, fitty. It's the magic hour. Bradley M, a thousand. Yes, Brad, go Brad. 20 minutes, $10,000. Now we're getting there. Let's, let's all review the list. Okay. Done, done, beautiful. I love you, Seamus. Money. Three, two, one. Whee! Woo, always on time, always on time. <laughs> all right, what we got, what we got? All right, all right, let's see. One million. $288,423. Yeah! It's a lot of luggage. The reality is that if you're going out of the district, it's just for money. It's either that or you're going to DC for the connections that you have to have. If there's coffee at this thing, drink some. What I did this week, a whole bunch of labor meetings with different unions, fundraiser, some member meetings, more member meetings. I think probably we're at about 20 something meetings for the, for the week. This isn't new, like there's never been a second of downtime when I'm in DC. I did have a meeting canceled and I got an hour of call time in today. This is the new space. We were totally crammed in the other place. We're having like 150 people come to these campuses and we just had no more room to get them in. We have room for phone bankers, we have a couple bathrooms, closet space, kitchen back there. Excuse me, Michelle, sorry. And uh, you can come up here and just get a good little view of the whole space and see what's going on and check it out and make sure that everybody's doing their thing. What's up, gang? Our tracker is here. Lots of cameras. How's it going? How's it going? Good. A tracker uh, is an individual who follows around a candidate with a camera and basically just waits for them to say something that's going to get them in trouble. Uh, most of the time they don't, but every now and then they do, and it becomes a big story, and then they normally lose. What? Katie Hill, like, I campaign well, office, I get hit up. Keep you safe, man. Let's get, hop, hop on up on the sidewalk. We're gonna head inside. Obviously, if you wouldn't mind staying out here, and then uh, we'll get out of here. We have to come up with this new infrastructure that, like, I'm very committed to keeping my team on board, but the roles are gonna look different. Ben's moving into more of kind of an overarching campaign role. Thank you so much for coming to this. Um, we got this space because we couldn't hold all of these people in our other spot. So we're, yes. They are the ones that won this election, so I feel like that loyalty is important. And it is all because of this person no. who makes this happen. Woo! Got your uh, packet? Yep, I do. So they set a hearing if it's approved and you get a TRO, temporary screening order, and then the judge between cases has to review it and approve or decline. And gang, we're probably gonna leave you here. We're getting a restraining order on somebody today. There have been threats to uh, burning this place down to, to my staff, that he'll take them out back and they'll never come back, and um, all kinds of those sorts of things. So three days ago, we got an armed security guard 
because of the threats that we're getting. And we had somebody who my neighbor caught cutting the fence to get into our property and wearing a ski mask. So now we're having to install like this big old security system on our two and a half acre property. You can't help but think about like the actual risk to, to me and to my team. And you know, I think the, the Gabby Giffords thing is something that plays out a lot. There's been striking similarities to this person that we're having trouble with. So I'm, I'm pretty, pretty freaking scared. <laughs> Yeah, we're getting set to go to Egypt, to, and it's just oh like, gosh, yeah, you know, so we're like, let's take advantage totally. of all the benefits right, Candace, of not having one. I know, I know. Yeah, I, I, I long for being able to travel. <laughs> well, you're so, going to be doing a lot of traveling in about Right, but not, four the, months. not the, like, the kind that, you know, you actually exactly. need to So how many days are left? I'm not near the calendar right now. I'm just like, I'm just like, I can't think about it right now. They push you in yeah. a direction, you go yeah, there. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. There's like four events a day, so. There you go. I mean, the rest is call time. So are you uh, back in the swing of things at work? Back in the swing of things, remembering what it's like to be a lawyer. Nice. Uh, writing briefs, going, taking depositions, and saying, okay, here's the, you know, this part of the life. Oh, that's good. So, yeah. Well, cool. Well, it's good to see you. Yeah. Good to be here. All right, yeah. I guess we're going. All right, there cool. Go. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. It's great to be here at the DCHD and Katie Hill Office Open. Congratulations to both of you. Uh, if this week showed us anything, is that this president has to go. Yes. Uh, I, I For me, this was never about Donald Trump in the, in the beginning. But more and more, the further we go, it's like, Jesus, we have to do something about this. So it's literally the fate of our country and of the world. And you don't get to stop. Like, this isn't about you. You don't, it doesn't matter how tired you are. It doesn't matter how much you would rather be doing anything else. It's a lot. There's days when you just aren't, you're not, you don't want to do it. Hi, John, it's Katie Hill. I'm good, how are you? How are things in Texas? Have you been following the campaign? We just got polling back showing that we're dead even. I want to get a, lot, a, a solid lead before November, that's for sure, so. Thanks so much. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. He's gonna give $1,000. All right. <gasps> in case you're wondering, I also had a little bit of a meltdown in the finance team meeting today, so, you know, just another, another day. All right, I think we can stop there. We can stop talking. <laughs> Why? I'm being... Because then Chris is going, why weren't we in the meeting? Because they're not invited to the meeting. <laughs> it's fine. I basically was like, you guys need to do what I say, and everything sucks about being a candidate. And um, that was pretty much, that was pretty much the gist of it. And theme. Yeah. <laughs> they feel like I don't actually commit to call time. <laughs> and that I'm constantly trying to get out of it. And I don't agree with that perception. I still believe that the relationship side of things is what really drives the donations. And that doesn't mean always sitting in the call room and it sometimes means driving to West LA or to wherever, and it's not necessarily as efficient. I'm feeling increasingly managed and having a bit of a hard time with it. And so uh, it was not just, it wasn't just about the, the finance stuff. It was me being like, everyone stop trying to tell me what to do. So when is the next time we can vote? November 6th. November. That's the last one, right? Uh, well, hopefully not the last one ever. What? I don't even know what today is. Is it Wednesday? Today is Wednesday. Mm-hmm. It's not like you get a day off either. Nope. So I show up at these fundraisers with like all these fancy cars and then I've got my like very dirty Chevy Cruze with like <laughs> the, the, the taken out taillight and pretty classy. 
you feel like you're in an alternate reality a lot of the times with this campaign stuff. Like, I went from a year and a half ago just being a regular person. Now I'm like texting with members of Congress all the time. You're going to these events at like places of incredible wealth that I never would have set foot in before. It looks darker. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You don't see you more than any of my other friends. Do you? Yeah, because I... <laughs> I'm really sad for you. I know, isn't it? <laughs> Vote in November. <laughs> see you later. Bye. Can we cut these, Kenny? Watch out, Jeff. Jeez. I think hitting on that point, Working in, you know, we need we need like we need a new kind of politician mm -hmm. and someone who's is not beholden to partisan politics, special interest groups, or big money donors. Will you ask me things one chunk at a time? Sure. Today we were shooting videos that can be used in the focus groups that we're about to do next week. Um, the focus groups are going to talk to swing voters. They're going to talk to independents. The goal was kind of to get a lot of different things that can be used. What do people like about me? Um, what can we really kind of emphasize as we get closer and closer to the election? So I think it's that Washington's broken, needs a public servant, and then immigration. I think that's what's most important that comes out of today, yeah? I think why I'm running is like the, the number one yeah. priority. And I think with immigration, I know Bill was gonna write some stuff. I think he might have. We can keep shooting more that if you want what you feel like is a more concise, this is why I'm running video. I wanna get a why I'm running video. I think we have that. Are you confident that we have that? As long as you're understanding that what I'm saying is that we're gonna do another right. why I'm running, but in a different outfit. I'm gonna wear a blazer and shorts. It's gonna be a new look. That's gonna be awesome. We're doing a blazer? Like, yeah. what were those, like... The point of this is that it's for a focus group and that focus groups react to different things. And so that's what they're trying to understand. Do you like Katie when she looks professional? Do you like Katie when she looks casual? I guess I just feel like the blazer seems very out of place here. I think we should think about, like, what the absolute goals are. Just breathe. Um, okay. How do you feel about the government telling us what to do with our bodies? You don't want that for these focus groups. You don't want to do a video at all about people having access to family planning? No, I'll talk about it a little bit, but that's not... So what are your thoughts on women's rights? If we're unclear, then why don't we not do it? We've all got this stuff that we want to keep throwing in, but it's not helping, you know what I mean? We need to at least get the question answered. But you're definitely overthinking. You're trying to make sure to get the things yeah. that they're saying, mm -hmm. instead of just being you. Mm -hmm. If you need to come up with your own question to do that, mm -hmm. then do it. So I think that's part of why you're getting lost. And just hit it straight. We need to make sure that employers aren't impeding our access to critical health care coverage. That no matter where you live, you're able to access women's health care. And the government should be supporting that. Um, and it's as simple as that. Good enough. Can we get enough? Please be good enough. I'm just going over it. We can be, we can be done. <laughs> <laughs> It's a struggle, man. There's too many people there, too. Yeah. Welcome to the Lancaster Chamber of Commerce debate. First, we have incumbent Congressman Steve Knight. Boo. <laughs> and we have Democratic challenger Katie Hill. Congressman. Hi, Katie. First of all, I think that we have to make sure that people who shouldn't own a gun can't get their hands on a gun. Are you and saying that teachers shouldn't own a gun? You're interrupting me, sir. Excuse me. This is a chance for people to see me standing next to Steve Knight. More people are paying attention. I think that there's just more on the line. I mean, this is the real deal now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Part of my STEP Act is to make sure that we put money into school safety that would harden our doors, make sure that the teachers have a button there to lock the doors down if something like this happens. Thank you, Steve. The vast majority of Americans believe that we need to have sensible gun regulations, especially universal background checks, but we can't get that passed through Congress. And uh, that's one of the reasons that I have not and never will take money from the gun lobby, unlike Congressman Knight, and I look forward to working on this issue in Congress. We have more jobs than we have the people to fill them. 
First time in about 40 years that's happened. 80% of the benefits from this tax plan that are putting us in a $1.5 trillion deficit over the next 10 years are being afforded to the wealthiest 1% of people in this country. This tax cut is also bringing up our economy. 4.2% last quarter. Middle class workers, including so many here in our community, uh, are paying the brunt of that. We have a booming economy. People know that. Congress last year, including Steve Knight, voted to take away health insurance from millions of people, including over 60,000 people here in our own community, without a plan to replace it. Just wanted to see how you thought the debate went. Went fine. Uh, how's the, and tell me a little bit about how you think the campaign's been going. I think it's going great. I think that went about as well as it could have. Yep. Like, literally could not have asked for it to go on better. Oh my god, it was great. I think it went well, as well as it could go. He didn't make any major mistakes, though, so, you know, there's that. But, um, and then came back here for a bus tour kickoff with Gavin Newsom. I think that it was actually really significant that Gavin uh, kicked off his California bus tour here. So, you know, I'm grateful for that because it is saying, like, well, like, the whole state should be paying attention to this. Are you peaking too early? Is that a worry? We're not counting on anything. We know that this, that it all boils down to how hard we work over the next 57 days and how many people we're able to get to show up to the polls on election day. I want to thank each and every one of you for stepping up and stepping in the most important election of our lifetime. Thank you all. Votes. Christy and I need you. Our next governor needs you. Let's make this happen. You ready to win? Can we technologically grab hold of this car that's spinning out of control? It's the engineering project of the century. The idea is to try to rebuild a natural system with the least possible intervention. So we as a species have put carbon in, so we as a species should be taking it out. We have to, or find somewhere else to live. We should be thinking of this, you know, as a war. This stuff is so terrifying because there are nine billion lives at stake.